Hi, today I would like to show you my daughter's third grade homeschool curriculum. In a previous video, I showed the sunlight instructor guides that we're going to be using for her third grade. And here today, I just want to show the actual curriculum and books that we're using. So for her language arts, we're using the sunlight language arts. And in the instructor guides, it'll explain to you how to do spelling. It'll give you like a spelling rule and some spelling words. And it'll give you some instructions on what to do each day to teach those spelling words. But I've just kind of, over the years, I've just kind of done my own thing with the spelling words. So on the first day, I'll write all the, the 10 words on a whiteboard. And then I will talk about the rule and explain how the rule works with each of those words. And then for the rest of the week, we'll just do, you know, two or three words a day. And I'll have my daughter spell them or I'll write them down, have her copy. So essentially the rest of the week, we're just sort of working with that spelling list. I don't do any testing. And at the end of the week, I'll have her write a sentence or two using the words. So that's sort of how we do the spelling from there. The instructor guides will also give you like a language arts worksheet, which will be kind of like a grammar. It'll talk about um, grammar and uh, punctuation and, uh, you know, that language kind of skills. And there'll also be copy work. And then there'll also be a creative expression section of their language arts guide. And it's, it's not just creative writing. It teaches paragraphs and essays um, and all sorts of different writing skills and techniques. So your instructor guide gives you quite a bit of language arts instruction um, for that grade level. Um, and here they'll have you choose your own right handwriting program. And I choose a reason for handwriting. I really like this book. I've used it over the years with all my kids. I like the simplicity of it. You know, here's day one, day two, just really short assignments. Day three, and then for day four, you're doing a Bible verse. And then they have these sheets in the back that you can color you know, and they can choose whatever sheet they want to write their Bible verse on. So I really like how simple this is. And she's doing the manuscript this year. I think probably next year we'll try cursive, but I just don't think she's ready for it. Um, sometimes in the sunlight language arts, they'll offer you an optional workbooks, which means you don't have to use them. Um, so this is a phonics workbook that they is optional for the grade three language arts. Now, a lot of kids by grade three have probably already had a lot of phonics, you know, for kindergarten, first grade, second grade. But my daughter seems to still need a little bit of help with phonics. I gave her a DORA assessment at the beginning of the summer and it showed that she had some gaps in phonics. So I do know that you can't cover all gaps, you know, but I just thought maybe a phonics workbook would be good for her this year and this is a nice workbook it's very colorful and it looks like it covers you know a lot of phonics rules so I think this will be good I'm glad to be using this with her and the other optional workbook is the vocabulary workbook I always seem to buy the vocabulary workbooks but we don't really use them all that much. They just really tend to be busy work because you're doing so many other language art skills. You know, you're writing and reading and grammar and, you know, penmanship. And so, you know, a vocabulary workbook just seems to be extra. And it can be time consuming when you're trying to get, you know, other important subjects done. So I'm not sure if we're going to use this a lot of times over the years. We end up using just, you know, a few pages and not finishing the whole workbook. You know, when I do give my children assessments, you know, my son is, he's a 10th grader. He's had, you know, a couple Iowa standardized tests and he's always exceeded in vocabulary. And my daughter also, even on her Dora test that she took summer, she did really well with vocabulary. And I think with all the books that we read for Sunlight, you know, all the books that they read, all the books that I read, they just, you know, their vocabulary is just going to be you know, wonderful because of all the reading. So we just don't really use a lot of the vocabulary workbooks, um, but I bought it just in case this year because it's not very big. But again, I'm just not sure if we're going to use it. Now, the last thing for her language arts is the books that she's going to be reading. So these are the sunlight readers for grade three. 
So these are the books she'll be reading on her own. And with a, when you order an HBL, which is history, Bible, and literature, um, the literature, you get all the history books that you need. You get all the Bible books that you need. And for the literature, that's read aloud and the readers um, that you get when you order the HBL. So when you order a language arts from Sunlight, you're just getting the language arts guide, which is going to do all the teaching, you know, the spelling, the creative expression, the grammar worksheets, copy worksheets, and it gives you the schedule, how to schedule out those workbooks you know, the phonics workbooks, vocabulary workbooks. Um, so that's what that is. So you'll still get readers when you order an HBL. So for her readers this year, she's getting Jake Drake, Bully Buster, um, The Last Little Cat, Cora Freer, The House on Walenska Street, Viking Adventure, The Paintbrush Kid, The Littles. Now this book, she's already read... She got this from the library this summer, so I'm going to have to substitute that. The Chalkbox Kid, Third Grade Detectives, Secret Valley, Question of Yams. This is a Christian book. Um, a lot of times in sunlight, they will have Christian missionary books kind of spread throughout the readers or the read-alouds, you know, and also in their Bible. And I love that sunlight is a Christian company. We, you know, we are a Christian family. But we're also an Orthodox Christian family. So sometimes Protestant materials just don't always work as well for us. So I'm going to have to read through this and take a look at it. And if I'm going to choose not to read it, then I will substitute it with something else. Riding the Pony Express. Keep the Lights Burning Abbey. Prairie School. The Long Way Westward. Long Way to a New Land. And Claire and the Book Wagon. Now these are the five-day books. So I've ordered the four day instructor guides for my HBL, for my language arts and my science. I've done, you know, five days in the past and I don't really care for them. So I've ordered the four day this year for that. And um, so, but I still sometimes like to have the extra books on hand. So here in this catalog, It'll show you, you know, all the books that you get for the readers, for the grade three readers. And then here's the extra five day ones. So if you're ordering the four day instructor guides, you can still get these extra five day books. So a lot of times when I order the four day, I will, you know, I'll go through and I'll look to see what the five day books are. And if those, I'll read the description. And if they sound kind of interesting, then I'll go ahead and read them. And so it is nice to have these extra books in case you want to substitute. Like here, you know, she's already read this book, so I'll substitute that one. And I may be substituting this one. So I'll have a couple books here to choose from. I'll probably go with these two to substitute. These are great books, but these are mostly books I got for her to read on her own. So I'm not sure, you know, I'm, they're not really kind of like for school, I guess. These are kind of like for on her own. And you can get these at the library. It's like a whole series of them. So I kind of like going and buying some of those extra five-day books, but I really like the four-day schedule. The four-day schedule is just so much easier to handle. It's nice having that extra day as a buffer. Um, in previous years, Sunlight has had a four-day and a five-day schedule, but like last year, their four-day schedule was basically all their five-day books smushed into the four-day schedule. But this year, their four-day schedule is actually less books. So, you know, some people aren't going to like that, you know, so they'll go to the five day, but it's okay for me because there's just so many books that you're reading that it's perfectly fine to have less books. And I just love having that four day schedule, having that extra day as just a buffer. Um, so that's what her language arts is going to look like this year. Okay, now for her math, we're going to be doing Write Start. And we've done a lot of different programs over the years, and Write Start is definitely one of my favorites. Um, this is Write Start Level B. This is actually kind of a first grade curriculum, and she's in third grade this year. So I'm a little concerned about her being behind in math, but, you know, that's why we homeschool. And uh, I've tried different things for these past couple of years. We've done Saxon. 
and that worked out okay. I actually had trouble with Saxon because I found the manual to be just so hard and cumbersome to use. There's just, there were so many pages for each lesson, so many things to teach. It got really overwhelming and I just didn't like that. I had a hard time with that. And she didn't really like the flashcards. That was just not a way that was working well for her to learn her, you know, her math facts. And then after that, we tried Matthew C. And I love Matthew C because it's very teacher friendly. I mean, it's so easy to use. And Mr. Dem on the videos is just wonderful. But it did get to be a little bit boring. And I really missed having games. And so I find myself, you know, trying to search online for different math games. And then I just remembered how how much fun I had using this program with my son. When he was in first grade, we did Right Start Math and we did it all the way um, to level D. So, and we just had a really great time with this and he really learned his math. So I'm really glad to be back to this program. I like how you use all these manipulatives, use lots of math games. And so for the instructor guide here, this is lesson 20. So you'll have objectives and materials, and here's all the activities for teaching. And then here the explanation is just like explanation for the teacher. So here's talking about drawing part whole circle sets, which I just love this method for teaching uh, math facts. And then here it explains, you know, a little bit more about what the part whole circle sets are. And here's talking about the cumulative property. And here it's going to just, you know, explain a little bit more for that for the teacher. And here's the activities and explanation. I like that this is just a two-page spread for each lesson. You know, like I said, Saxon sometimes had more than just two pages. That was just a lot to have to deal. I mean, every day to have to go through all those pages um, was just too much. So here, with this two-page spread, it makes it a lot easier. So usually what I'll do when I'm teaching Right Start is I'll sit in the living room for like five or, you know, five or ten minutes and just read through and get myself, you know, acclimated to what the lesson of the day is and my daughter will be at the dining room table and she'll be working on a workbook or a handwriting page or something and so I'll just sort of read through what the lesson is for the day and then I'll go to the dining room table and teach it and so this can take 30 minutes sometimes even 45 minutes depending upon the games and stuff that you're playing so it is a little bit longer I do notice with Matthew C we would get done in like 20 minutes with a lesson I mean, we'd watch, you only have to watch the video once a week, and then the rest of the day you're just working on the lesson. So it was a lot faster. And this one does take a little bit more time during the day. But I just, I really love this program. And then here you have a worksheet book. So for that lesson 20, um, it was saying that you would use worksheet 6. And I like that because that was lesson 20. And this is worksheet six. So that's sort of, you know, indicative that she's not going to have a worksheet every single day. And I really like that because that means we're doing lots of games, lots of manipulatives, and not workbook pages every day. Now, I know with the later grades of Right Start, like level C and D, you do a lot more worksheets. You'll do like a worksheet almost every day. But level B is my favorite because it's lots of games. It's a lot of fun. And here's the math card games book. And this will be all the math games, you know, subtraction, addition games, um, fractions, you know, t telling time. All the games are going to be in here. And it'll tell you when to use the games in your lesson manual. And they're not, you're going to use all the games because there are, like they say here, over 300 games. So you're not going to use all the games inside you know they're not all here in this lesson manual but there are lots of games in the lesson manual so even if you only use the games from the lesson manual you're going to have a really you know enjoyable time there's lots of games but this is just uh extra you know if you want to do some extra games to look through so that'll be what her math is and i'm really looking forward to the right start math with her Okay, now for my daughter's science, we're doing sunlight science, B, but I'm also going to try to do the Apology Exploring Creation Botany with her. And uh, we started this a little bit last year because she really showed interest in wanting to do gardening and learning about plants. And so we started this and she really loved it. 
So I'm going to continue with this here, but I also had already purchased the Sunlight B. So I'm going to try to combine them. Um, it's really hard sometimes to combine curriculum because you can end up just being really frustrated, but I think I have a way that's going to work. Um, but so here is her botany. So here's the book, and I just love these books. I love how they talk about God all the time. And they don't do it in a preachy way. They just say things, you know, like, this is God's creation, or God created this. And I just really love that. And it's got nice pictures. I mean, it is more textbooky than, like, sunlight books. Um, but they really are nice pictures. And they have lots of activities. Lots of activities and fun things to do. And even when you get the notebook, you get more activities. The only negative thing I would say about this book about the exploring creation books is that when you're working with younger children like kindergarten first grade second grade um the vocabulary can be pretty complicated so you have to you know do a little more explaining you know if you just read it you know word for word you know you might have to stop and explain a few things so i really love the notebooking the activities in this book and how they talk about God and I buy the notebook you don't have to buy a notebook it actually tells you in there in the book how you can just make your own but I really like to buy the notebook just makes it a little easier so here for I want lesson for last year I, I did the writing and she drew the pictures and that's kind of what we did there and so I really like this and the, and the um, notebook here gives you more activities to do um, so I really like that and then with her sunlight science, these are the books for her sunlight science. So I think what I'm going to do with sunlight then is that every year they'll usually give you like two optional activities and an experiment each week to do. Sometimes the experiments can be like two or three small experiments. So, you know, I love sunlight science because it's very active learning. They give you lots of activities. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the books to her and maybe do the activity questions. And we're gonna just forego the experiments and activities because we're gonna get plenty of activities from her botany. And Sunlight has such wonderful books. Um, a lot of them are pretty secular. You know, they're not gonna talk about, this is a DK book, so they're not gonna talk about God or anything, you know. Now the instructor guides will talk about God. You know, the instructor guides will do that. And sometimes there'll be questions, which is really great. But it's just one of the things that I love about Apology is that they talk about God in the book. Um, but these are really great books. I mean, this is going to be about space. And, uh, you know, this is a DK book. Just lots of great pictures. And so that's great. And then they usually always try to include some kind of biology or biography book. So that's what we're going to be reading this year. And here's an Usborne book, Why Do People Eat? And here's a Magic School Bus. Now, for some weird reason, my daughter doesn't like Magic School Bus. I mean, I don't even know how that's possible, but my son just loved those. She would watch them on Netflix just over and over again. Or actually, I don't know if they were on Netflix when he was younger. Probably like PBS. We watch them over and over again. But we're going to go ahead and, and read this. I may actually just get the, the movie of it. I think Netflix might still have them on streaming. But if not, our library will have like the TV show of it. That might be a little better. I mean, the books are kind of hard to read. I don't like reading like all this kind of dialogue stuff. So I don't. I really don't like reading the Magic School Bus books. But I love Magic School Bus. I love the, the TV show. And then here's the first Encyclopedia of the Human Body. You know, again, lots of great pictures. They use lots of Usborne books. Sunlight does. So, and here is the Usborne World of Animals. And again, lots of, you know, just really great photos. Very engaging pictures. So I think, you know, there's a lot of value in just reading these books. So even if we don't do all the activities... You know, these are going to be some really enjoyable books to just read. So here's the Usborne Science Activities book. 
And this is the book we're probably not going to be using. Now, Sunlight also gives you a DVD. And the DVD is really great. It has one of their sons who's in the DVD. And he does all these experiments. And he's really kind of funny. And uh, he, they actually do the experiments for you. And that's really great. I like to actually, you know, actually see them do it as opposed to just reading them. So I do like that. And these are the five-day books. So again, I ordered the four-day um, schedule for science this year. But I bought the five-day books because I just thought this one would be really important to read. I thought this would be good. Because she's always asking questions about this when she gets sick or somebody gets sick. So I'm going to read that. And this book just looks so good. I mean, here it's telling you how things are made. Like, here's how they make pencils. I remember she asked about this one time, and we went on YouTube and found a video. So that's always good. You know, you can find a YouTube video for almost anything. And here's chocolate. You know, here's how to make apple juice. Here's how to make Lego bricks. So I think these is going to be really interesting. So these books, so I hope that's going to work out. I hope that we'll be able to do that. It won't be too overwhelming to do the botany you know, one thing also about these exploring creation books is that technically you can do this um, in like, you can do two of them a year because there's only 14 lessons, but each lesson is several pages. So it's made to like, you can either do this the whole year and just really take your time or you can do two of them a year. So I think if we just do one this year and then we read the sunlight books, um, I think that'll work. I don't think that'll be too overwhelming. So that's what we're going to be doing for science this year. Okay, so now for her history, I ordered the HBLB, which is Intro to World History. So for that, you know, the main books are going to be A Child's History of the World, which is just sort of like story form of reading through history. And I've only read part of this... I didn't really read this when my son was young. When my son was young, he had a really hard time listening to books, listening to me read to him without pictures. So when my son did this core when he was younger, uh, we only did the Usborne books. So this will be kind of a new one for me. And then Tut's Mommy Lost and Found. And here again are the Usborne books. Now some people have complained they have a hard time reading these. And I sort of get that. Because the words and pictures are just all over the place. But what I do when I read these is I very rarely will read them word for word. Um, what I'll do is, you know, when I open up a page, my children will usually be really enthralled. And they're just like looking at all the pictures. And so what I do is I just read to myself, you know, what some of it says. And I'll just say in my own words what that says while I'm pointing to the pictures. So that's kind of what I do. I don't always read everything word for word with the Osborne books. So I like them. I really like these books. My daughter doesn't love them as much as my son does. She actually, I think she'll actually probably prefer the children's history of the world better. So every child is kind of different. So that's the Osborne book of world history. And then Time Traveler is another Osborne book. And these are the five-day books. So I went ahead and got these because they're just really short. I don't think we should have any problem just kind of adding these in. But I did get the four-day schedule. So here is Archaeologist Dig for Clues. You know, again, I just don't like reading dialogue like that. Because the Magic School Bus books do that too. But she insists, like, if I was reading this to my son when he was younger, I could, like, not read the dialogue and he'd be perfectly fine. But she knows. She knows if I'm not reading everything because she's, she's pretty good at reading. So I pretty much have to read the dialogue. I can't, I can't cheat with her. And this book here, I just thought was really beautiful. So here I'll give you different houses around the world. So here's, like, a house in India. And then it'll give you a drawing of what it's like inside and kind of talk about it. And it'll give you all these houses all over the world. So we'll probably put these on the markable map when we, when we read about it. I thought this would be a really great book for her just to see how other people live. You know, 
she's so used to like on television and movies and even you know just in our own neighborhood you know that how we live is like maybe how everybody in the world lives so I really like this book and the Great Wall of China I just got this because I think we can just read it in one day so you know as they get up in grade levels like you know level G or something I may be less you know wanting to order a five-day books because they're gonna be a lot thicker you know it'd be just harder to get through but here you know with these three books these won't be that hard to get through and then you have the timeline book and you get one book per student and um, you keep adding to it each year so you don't have to buy one every year or something and you just you get you know with your HBL you get a pack of timeline figures and you cut them out and they're peel and stick so you just put you know the timeline figures in she doesn't have too many of them because we just started using this book so that's really good addition for you know for learning the different events and people that you come across so we'll just keep adding to this year after year you know my son's book he's in 10th grade you know his is a lot you know it's a lot more full and then this markable map i talked a little bit about how we use markable map in my other video and I really like this. I like to use this. The kids have fun. We use the wet erase markers, you know, and they last. They don't smudge. Too bad, <laughs> I guess. But she she drew this like a year ago, and it's still there. So you can just keep adding as the year goes on, you know, adding places onto your map. And it will pretty much stay there, you know. And then at the end of the year, you can erase it. When my son was doing the sunlight when he was younger, I used to do a lot of printing off of maps. And that's nice because, you know, you can keep them in a portfolio because here you just kind of erase it. So I guess if you really want to have maps to like show, you might want to do that instead. But it's just so nice and easy to, to pull out this. And then it also has the laminated map, which I don't have right now. But I did show it in my previous video. And the laminated map is really, really easy to use. Now, I do have a couple extra things that I might do. It's really hard to add stuff to sunlight. So I'm almost hesitant to even bring these out of my closet. But my son had fun with this. This is just hieroglyphic um, stamps. I got this at Barnes & Noble years ago. Um, you can buy different. I don't think you can buy the same one, but you can buy different things. So it's just these stamps. I can't get that out, but it has a different hieroglyphics, and there's a book that talks about how to use them. Um, so he had fun using that, making up sentences. And then I got this at a used bookstore. It's kind of the same thing. Um, so we'll see about that. And then I have history pockets for ancient civilizations. So these are going to be like things to color, things to cut and paste. It's for ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient China, and the Aztec world. So it would be like some maps, different crafting, um, different things to cut out, different activities to do for each of that. So we might do that. Again, I really am hesitant to add things. To our studies because it can be difficult to do that but you know we'll see how that works so that's essentially what her history is going to be now for her bible sunlight offers one bible book for this year is different each year so this is the one that sunlight is choosing leading little ones to god and there's also like a hymn cd a music cd um, we're not going to be using this book here. Um, like I mentioned before, we're an Orthodox Christian family. So a lot of times Protestant materials um, don't actually work. And I prefer to do my own, you know, Bible books. So for her, I've, you know, I looked through my closet and I picked out a bunch that I think would work well. This is like a little prayer book. It has different prayers. It talks about some of the traditions that we have at church. Looks like our puppy kind of ate at it, but it'll still work. So I really like that book. And the Jesus Prayer, I just really love the Jesus Prayer. I say it myself all the time. So I want to teach her about the Jesus Prayer, and I wanted to explain her, you know, explain to her why we use it and, 
And here's pictures of God. We can talk about icons. Icons, we call them windows into heaven. And, um, you know, really pretty pictures. So these are some of the main icons of the church. So that would be a good book to go through. Christina Goes to Church. There's like a series of these. I think I got, I think you get these from the Greek website. But it's just talking about how she behaves in church and, you know, what sort of things that she does when she see when she's at church. So, so I think that'd be good. A Visual Catechism of the Orthodox Church. I picked this up at um, our monastery one time when we were up there. Really nice pictures. It gives you really short explanations here, but in the back, you know, it can give you longer explanations if you need for, you know, for older kids. So, but it talks about the different mysteries of the church. Uh, mysteries would be, maybe the Catholics would call them sacraments. We call them mysteries. And the different teachings of the church. Here's the creation story. So that'll be really good. Um, Getting to Know God. I really love this book. This is really important part about orthodoxy is that we believe, you know, that God gave us these wonderful senses, you know, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting. And so as orthodox, we use all those sen senses in our worship service when we worship God. And so that's what this book talks about. And so I really like that. Um, here is talking about the divine liturgy, which, you know, Catholics might call that mass. And so it goes through the divine liturgy. And here is a book of saints. Now, my son has already read this book on his own. So I was just going to pick and choose and read some of these saint stories to her. So this is a lot of books, but they're also just really picture books. So I don't think they're going to take that long to go through. You know, even if we did like one a month or something, we'd probably finish these all. So I think it should be fine. I don't think it'd be too much. So that's what we're going to be doing for our Bible. So I mentioned before that HBL stands for History Bible Literature. We used to always call them cores, you know, but now sunlight's changing their you know, how they say things. They don't really use the word core anymore. It's HBL. So, so for her literature portion, these are the, I already showed you the readers. These will be some of the uh, read alouds. Now, I think in the five-day option, this is a history book. And the four-day option, I think it's a read aloud book. I'm not totally sure about that, but I like this book. I think it looks really kind of fun. It's going to talk about different countries. And here is a poetry book. Every year, Sunlight has a poetry book. And this one is really nice. The pictures are, ooh, except for maybe that picture, but all these other pictures are really um, lots of great photographs. Lots of great photographs. And then, um, so this is a really nice poetry book. I really like this. And for all of her read-alouds, these are the books that I'm going to be reading to her. So we got Understood Betsy, which is one of my favorite books. Um, Goonie Bird Green. This is a fun book. She'll like this. This is actually a series. I think you can get more Goonie Bird Greens, too. Homer Price, which is kind of a classic. Henry Huggins. Owls in the Family. The Year of Miss Agnes. This is kind of neat. This is about... I think this is like Alaska, um, a teacher who teaches up there. It's kind of like a one-room schoolhouse kind of thing. Uh, Happy Times in Noisy Village, Little Pear, The Year of the Baby, Detectives and Togas. This is a long book to read, and it can be kind of dry sometimes, but it does fit in with studying ancient history. Now, here I have my own books I'm going to be using, adding in, because some of the read-alouds we've already done. So we've already read Charlotte's Web. So instead of doing Charlotte's Web, I'm going to do this. I could pick this up at Barnes & Noble, and I love these hard-covered classic stories you can get. You know, it's got really nice little pictures. So I think I'm going to read this instead of Charlotte's Web. And the other book that I'm not going to read is Catching Their Talk in a Box. So instead, I'm going to read this, The Family Under the Bridge. This is from HBLA. 
and we didn't get a chance to read this one. And I read this story to my son and I really love it. It's about, it takes place in Paris and it's about a homeless man and a homeless family actually, and how they come together and help each other out. I really like that story. And the other book that she's already read is Greek Myths. When I purchased all these books at the beginning of the summer, she grabbed the Greek Myths. It's a smaller book. It's not very big. It's like this big, you know, and it's hardcover. And she just read it. She would bring it with her in the car and just read it. And I was surprised because I don't really like Greek stories. They're very tragic and, um, I don't know, kind of depressing. But she seemed to really like that book. So she read it already. So I'm going to use this one, babe, um, to substitute. And then I also have copy, Cappy Boppy. I love Bill Peet books. And this was from uh, HBLA. And we didn't get a chance to read this one. So I'd really like to read this this year. It's more of like a picture book. So I don't think it's going to take too long to get through. So that's her literature. So those are all the books that we're going to be going through for her homeschool curriculum this year. It's a lot of books. So I don't know, you know, a lot of years we don't end up finishing all these books and any books we don't finish, I'll put on a shelf and I will use them as substitutions or, you know, people can read them on their own. You know, that's just how it works some years. Um, so I hope that was helpful and um, thank you for watching. God bless.